Hi, I'm Lori. And I'm Emily. And welcome to the Art of Podcast. And tonight we'll be painting. Um, so I didn't want this to be like a paint and sip situation. I wanted mm -hmm. this to be a little bit more um, pick something that is interesting to you because I think that um, art needs to be interesting to the right. artist. So I went out and I picked a bunch of pretty leaves and other things in my yard and thought we would each pick one and that could be our focus of our painting tonight. I love it. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about our materials. Okay. Um, so we have palette, pencil, brushes. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, these paints are called heavy body paints, so they're a little thicker. They're not gonna be the thin craft paints that mm -hmm. you might find at like, an art craft store. Um, and then you'll have two cups of water. So one will be your first to dip to like clean the brush. So this will be your dirty water. Okay. And then it's really important to keep your paintbrush wet. Uh, so before you put on new paint, you'll dip it in your clean water. It's also um, important that when you're sketching on your canvas, I don't have watercolor pencils. Some people will use those and they blend into the paint. I just use a regular pencil, so just sketch lightly. Start there, and then we'll talk about picking a background color and how to block that in. Okay. Now, do you get very detailed with your edges, or do you just loosely? Um, for a small canvas, I won't. Uh -huh. um, if it was like a really big canvas, then I would. Okay. Um, and because I have this reference here with me, I can very easily go back and look. Okay. Great. So the next step, we're gonna start with painting the background. Mm -hmm. And because I, we're doing some oranges, yellows, reds, you know, very warm colors, uh, I'm gonna pick a cooler color for my background so that it pops more. Okay. Um, I might go purple. Mm. or blue, mm -hmm. um, you can go whatever you're feeling. It doesn't have to be a, a cool color. So, so these you said just, just a... Yeah, so, so these paints can go pretty far because you're gonna have a wet brush and these are really thick and so they'll get watered down as you paint and as you use your brush. Okay, so about, you think, like that? Mm-hmm. And then I always put my white off to the side. Mm -hmm. And when you want to add white to your paint, you bring the white to the paint. Okay. Don't bring the color to your white. Otherwise, it'll get, it won't be white. Contaminated. <laughs> okay. And then just start putting, putting it on the canvas. All right. And then Here we go. You can always. Does it matter which way you stroke? That's just the way you want your it doesn't. Um, I sometimes will go, like once I've blocked in all the color, I might go over just all the way across or in a curving motion so that it it blends the brush strokes a little bit better. You can tell who the uh, expert is here compared to me. <laughs> I'm moving a bit slower. That's okay. So how long have you been painting? Did um, you start when you were young? No, uh, I started about seven years ago. And it's kind of a funny story hmm. how I fell into painting. I used to do a lot more sketching. Mm -hmm. It was definitely my happy place. And I was at a bachelorette party and we went to a paint and sip. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun and just sort of, but. You know, that was it, just had fun, and I was happy with how it turned out, and I was like, yay, you know, this was awesome. And But apparently it was, my paint and painting was so inspiring that my husband signed me up to do <laughs> a, a painting for a friend. So it was, Wow. he just came home and he's like, yeah, my friend is looking for somebody to paint a forest scene on a six foot long saw for a wedding gift. Ah. And I was like, okay, and he's like, I told him you could do it, and I was like, oh, okay. And the correct response would have been, no, I can't. I've only painted one thing in my life. Um, but instead I said, sounds like fun. Let's just give it a try. 
Um, and you it were was, up for the challenge. Uh, yes. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I gave it a try and it was, it turned out by some miracle to not look terrible. And then I just kind of got hooked. You were meant to paint. I guess. <laughs> Well, I've always loved art. My grandma was an artist and she gave me drawing lessons when I was about five years old. And so, you know, that was the first thing I remember wanting to be. It was telling my mom, I want to be an artist when I grow up. Mm. <laughs> so you said you sketched before. Did yes. you do anything with that, with the sketching or was it just a personal just Hobby. a pers personal, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I, like all day long, I would just be at the kitchen table or in my bedroom and just doodling and sketching. And one hard thing I had to learn when I started painting, um, unlike sketching, when you're just, every detail you add makes it more and more beautiful. Oh. When you're painting, there's definitely an ugly stage. And sometimes the ugly stage lasts a really long time. <laughs> I mean, if you look at some of the, the half-finished projects in here, they're all on the ugly stage, and I just kind of was like, I'm tired of it being ugly, and I have to stop now. <laughs> but it, you, sometimes it's like the very last step of, like, I'm adding this detail, and then you're like, huh, okay. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not as, as rough as I thought it was. Okay. How's that? Great. All right. So actually... Next step. We're going to start with the lighter color first. I don't like my green. So again, make sure you get your brush wet before you get into the paint. Okay. I'm just going to block in all of that. Not going to be worried about being perfect um, because it's all going to get blended together. Okay. Is this your first leaf or have you painted leaves? Um, I have painted leaves before. I really enjoy flowers and leaves, and I like to do like close-ups of things and so that you can really focus on the way the colors blend together because I just think that that is such a beautiful part of nature. It's so nice and quiet in here. Do you come down, when you come down to paint, do you come down as an escape, like as a... Um, you know, like to de-stress, is it always quiet or do you, can you paint in my any kids environment? If I'm here and they are awake, they are also in here generally. Okay. And which is great. Which, yeah, love that's awesome. They're watching you. And, and paint, yeah. But there are definitely times in which I'm like, I wish you would go somewhere else. I'm trying <laughs> to be in the zone and you're touching all of my stuff. So I mostly come down here at night when they're already asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing okay, right? Yes. Yeah. Give me a, okay. And, honestly, and then a little bit of with, block off over. With oh. yours, you could paint almost all of it yellow. Since we're gonna be blending. Yeah. Okay. And then bring just, yeah, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. Okay. All right. Now we'll go in with the red. It's a very bright red. So we're just gonna paint. Yes. Like there's no like going light or like we're just gonna boldly paint so over top and for you because most of yours is yellow and you're just having little bits of red, is mm -hmm. I would don't go all the way down, go right. maybe halfway okay. where your red is. Mm -hmm. And same down here, kind of go halfway and then you'll spread it as you're blending the two colors together when we're we're going back in with okay. a dryer brush to mix them. It looks so much darker on canvas than it does on the palette. Well, if it makes you nervous, feel free to just take a scoop of mine. And, and okay. And, Although I feel like I'm, this is a new thing. I'm experimenting, <laughs> right? I yeah. need to learn. I feel like this takes a lot of concentration. Okay, so you said not to do the full thing. I mean, should I spread mine more or? So let's 
we're gonna do sort of like a first round blend. Okay. And then we we're gonna reassess and see where we're at from oh, there. I've got a little red up there. Yeah. Should I do that? Add a little bit there. Yeah. Okay, so we're cleaning yes. these. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but you don't okay. want your brush loaded with paint right now. Yeah, I like that. And then Take a deep breath and I tell myself it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just start like brushing along oh, the edges okay. where they come together. All right, with a little bit of water. <sighs> it's going to be okay. <laughs> you got this, you can do it. Oh, although I feel like mine's, I probably, this is where I should have gone heavier with my red before, right? Because this is washing it out just a little bit. So again, like I said, we're gonna do more layers. We'll we'll come in with the yellow and go back into the red. Okay. Uh, after this, um, you don't want your brush to be too wet because it'll. I just start like really, sometimes even just rubbing it, like dry brushing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because I'm. I'll pick up the yellow, bring it up. I'm getting a lot of orange in mine. Yeah, which is okay. I was just thinking about how easy painters make it look when you're watching them paint. And that's how you and know they're it, good at it. I don't know that. I mean, when you, not even when you watch them, if you look at someone's artwork and you're like, those look so easy, I could do that. And then you go and you try it and you're like, actually. <laughs> takes a lot more skill than what it appears. Patience. Patience. Like we're trying to, trying to duplicate a very beautiful fall leaf in a short period of time, but really, you could probably spend five hours on oh, a canvas yeah. this size, easy, and still have to like force yourself to walk away from it. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. So when you start on a painting, you don't you don't f have to finish each painting one by one. No. You c come back mm -hmm. to it, revisit it later on. Yes. You don't feel like, no, I have to finish this. Uh, sometimes I that, do, yeah. and that's a problem, and then I don't go to sleep. And then <laughs> <laughs> I have to see, I, I'm not the type of person that just can just like paint for a living like I have to want to do it and I have to be in the mood it has to be whatever my subject is has to be like I have to feel inspired by it uh -huh. I really like to look at it and if I'm not in the mood I there's been times where I mean I had a painting in this closet over here for three years mm -hmm. well I mean it was sitting for three years before I picked it back up and was like I'm just gonna finish this I, I oh. just I'm ready again. It's kind of like a book. I've done that with books. Mm -hmm. You know, where you pick it up and you're like, I just can't get into this. And then there's a point in time where you're ready. So yeah. I can understand that. And you're just, so what next? Do you just keep layering then? Or where yeah, do you? I mean, pretty much. And then that's what you do until either you or the painting wins. <laughs> So I'm going back in and adding the edges to my leaf. Okay. And I'm doing that by being very heavy with my red color so that it covers the purple because the purple is oh, so dark. Cool. Yeah. So it's going to have like a almost like a ridge to it. Um, but and because the purple is so dark, if like mm -hmm. this area here is outside of what I want it to be, but it'll be easy to touch up later. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between acrylic and oil? I mean, you know, as far as the makeup, but also just how it um, mixes, layers, you know. I don't how's know it? a definitive, like all of the things, uh -huh. uh, but I can tell you, like oils take a lot longer to dry. And so your ability to mix the colors is, 
you have a lot more time to do that where like the acrylic will dry really fast and then you'll be like, well, like Which, right now, if we were doing oils, your background would still be wet. Okay. You'd be able to mix all of that instead uh -huh. of painting on top of it. Okay. Um, and then it's also like you have to have, I think, specific cleaner for your brushes because it's oil and not, you can't just wash it with water as easily. Is and, that why you have learned to work so fast, paint so fast, or is that just, uh, you know, you just probably <laughs> just a, I'm, I don't know if practiced, I guess. Yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of learning, like I like the smooth look, but as I'm working, I kind of like the little bit of a messier, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say chaotic. Maybe that's just how I'm feeling right now. So it's coming out in my painting. I would be very proud of that painting if I were you. And it I looks amazing. And I probably would have spent a lot more time. Yeah, that's. I love the you know paint and sip because it's great to introduce people to a, that medium and get them interested in it, but I don't think it's also a very realistic, like people say, well, I can just paint something. I can paint anything in two hours. No, you can't, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't, not really. It's a good introduction to it art, is. right? It's a but great it's great introduction, but if that's, yeah, I think, I know I walked away in the beginning thinking, yeah, well, didn't take me very long. Shouldn't take me very long to do this simple looking painting. And then it was like six hours later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is the craziest subject you have ever painted? Like is there anything like off the wall or like, I can't believe I painted that or, and maybe not, maybe I, it's all it's just been like, like nothing wild and crazy. Oh man. I wish I had a great, like, one time. No. Um, I think my most ambitious painting was the I did one of my daughter holding a butterfly and, and the, I, the only person painting I've ever done. And I'm so happy with how it turned out that I am terrified to ever try again. Hmm. My other kids are like, when are you going to paint me? And I'm like, hmm, never. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, what advice do you have for someone who wants to start painting? Like, what advice for starting off? Well, I mean, you know, not to, you know, go back to, you know, I think that the paint and sip is a great opportunity to just kind of get your feet wet, um, but also, like, find a friend who maybe already does and see if they'll let you give it a try. And if you can try something before you invest a lot of money into a hobby, I always suggest it because like any other hobby, uh, it's not, it's not cheap. Um, so yeah. that's almost a, a open invitation <laughs> who wants to come paint. <laughs> Just give Emily a call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get something on the calendar. Well, that's how I ended up here. Yeah. Well, through the BAAC, right? This right. fun um, podcast series. But uh, I had said something to you about wanting to paint. And you said, well, come down and paint anytime. And, then, and I made you come paint yes, with me. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, in the busyness that is life, I don't know that I ever would have made it around the block <laughs> to come here and do this. So, so I'm so happy this, uh, this was the encouragement that it took. It worked out. It was a lot yes. of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you, Emily. Thank you for, um, inviting me to be your guest mm -hmm. for this podcast. I was very excited to dive into painting. And as I'm staring at my painting, I'm like, 
thanking you and wanting to <laughs> like pick my paintbrush back up. But well, yes, it, it was very enjoyable. And yes. I would say for being brave, I think it, it takes a lot of bravery to come into somebody else's art space and be like, yes, I'm just going to sit and, and learn this with you yes. in the moment. Yeah. So thank you for, for hanging out with me. I had a lot of fun. I did too. Thanks for watching. And be sure to tune in to the next episode of The Art of Podcast.